All right, here's a quick overview of the um, Goth 3D Mentor V2 chassis that's in the A New Hope graphics here. Uh, obviously, the A New Hope graphics, um, kind of a, a standard in the community. Bubble strip, red button, glass eye, has the D ring, and it also has the two different size rivets between the grips, uh, as shown in a couple of different uh, different shots. Sizes vary depending on who you talk to in the community. Um, at the time that this outer shell was put together, uh, these were the sizes that uh, the general consensus kind of um, kind of said were were the ones from the film. Uh, you do have two buttons, so the red button acts as one, and then the slide switch acts as the second. Uh, we'll show those on the chassis, how they connect once we start taking this apart, but um, it also has TCSS blade holder for the graphics uh, to make it look like the static bulb, but it does have shine through. Go ahead and open it up. Now this is not meant for any dueling at all. Um, it's just too intricate of a chassis. Um, even though like you can see this is it's locked in very solid it's just it's not meant for dueling um, half of the chamber hangs out when you display it this way you can see over here this is the power um, pin slider I guess is a way to put it it's not exactly I, I'd call it a kill switch um, as it's not really a switch itself it's more just kind of that uh, slide in pin We'll go ahead and turn that on here now. I'm Skywalker. I'm here to rescue you. <laughs> Swing on. Twist off is available. To remove the chassis fully, I do usually back the red button off a little bit. Um, I've got the tolerance between it and the switch on the chassis uh, fairly tight, so... It does keep the chassis from sliding out a little bit, but you don't want to use that as blade retention. The glass eye, I've left the spring on in order to do blade plug retention, which then slides out. And there's the whole chassis. It does have a stock V2 in it, uh, as this was built. Uh, before the V3s came out. You'll see the crystal is lit blue here, um, but when off, if I slide that power button off again, you'll see it is a natural blue coated quartz crystal. Uh, there are pixels here in the reactor. There's two, fa one facing each side of the crystal, and there's another one down here that points up. Then you've got a couple of more under these two areas here. These run in parallel uh, as well as a set right here um, that kind of runs on its own. So I'll show you those. What a piece of junk! So there's the red ones. And you'll see these ones actually light up pretty much the whole area. Uh, even though I think, if I remember right, there's only like five pixels under there. Button, the main power button is here on the tip of the chassis. And then you've got the auxiliary. I suggest you try it again, Luke. This time, let go your conscious self and act on instinct. It's all the, uh, those two are a New Hope graphics fonts, one for the... Um, I'm trying to remember the two scenes. One is the A New Hope training, which was that one. And I can't remember the previous one, uh, what, what it's referenced to. So to access the board or release the battery for charging, you pull this down. The brass bars right here that are attached to the speaker pod will hold it from going too far. So you can't pull these wires out. However, don't just like rip on this thing or yes, you will probably disconnect the brass from the speaker pod, which will then allow you to pull those wires off and you'll have to rebuild um, pretty much the entire speaker pod, it would probably mean. To get to the battery, first thing you wanna do, 
slide that switch. It is tight once it's engaged up to turn the whole saber off. With the speaker pod open, you'll just slide this down a little bit and then it just lifts out. For charging, you remove the top cover. You will take the charger, which has two pins in it that match, the pins on the battery pack. You'll slide these together. And then on the back, you plug it into a USB and on the front, it will give an indicator light of charged status or not. We'll pull that one back out. Just simply just snaps on this little groove and notch, this little groove and notch. They just kind of fit together. Uh, it won't hold it like completely, but it does hold it enough where when you're sliding it on and off the chassis, it's not going to flop around and be, um, be a hindrance to trying to get it to put back together. Access the SD card from under here. Um, just use, uh, for me, it's a pair of tweezers. Go and just pull it that way and it comes out. Um, obviously, the USB port is on the opposite side of that SD card. You do need a fairly small USB cord to fit in there. Um, the 90 degree cables that I have don't fit because of how wide these two bars are. Um, however, I can usually fit a standard straight connector um, in by coming in from this side out out behind the saber from this view and plugging it in that way. You just have to make sure that the cord itself is fairly short because obviously with this not being able to pull out any further than that, uh, it does create a little bit um, of a tight space and squeeze for that uh, connector to be plugged in. Putting it back on, you will see the two 440 rods there and there. They do line up with this groove and that groove and it just helps with alignment put it on slide it up till you see the tabs up here disappear and then you slide your speaker pod back in um, I'm trying to figure there's a couple of little greeblies added um, the copper pipes for accent uh, some little pieces here uh, that one in there and then of course uh, all the rods and other things all the other, there we go. My finger is moving the kill switch here. Um, all the rods and things that come standard, as well as a couple of other small ones. Uh, where's the other one here? Maybe I'm thinking of a different build that I've done. Um, I did have some accents on, uh, I believe it was a different, oh, there they are. The two little small ones, small one inside in there. Uh, a little hard to see probably on camera, but there's a couple of little things added. Uh, as well, I added the little copper accents um, in these holes, as well as drilled out the brass uh, Solus hole blade holder uh, to let some shine through on the blade plug. <laughs> With the blast shield down, I can't even see. How am I supposed to fight? Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Look at that. And then obviously, the blade plug in so it doesn't kind of wash out the camera. Uh, it is running Profi, Profi Board 2.2 with currently now OS 6. Uh, because it has seven individual defined blades on it, um, I have not gone through and done full edit mode package for this saber. Uh, each font is set up individually uh, with all seven blades having some small differences here and there, um, mostly blue in terms of the blade and the crystal chamber effects. But overall, um, all the stuff from about here down actually does have, um, you know, kind of individual changes that you will see um, as you go through the config. But that is kind of an overview. Um, thanks for watching.